Hello, I'm High Hill Knight, and welcome to my review of The Penis Movie, the 2015 uh, CGI animated movie about the Charlie Brown gang. I give the movie an A minus. Uh, are you one of the very few people who don't know who these characters are, despite the fact that they've been in newspapers uh, for decades, or their uh, cartoons have been on for decades, or every Thanksgiving, every uh, Christmas time, they have played those specials? Uh, did you somehow miss all the numerous commercials for various products, uh, from like MetLife to uh, cars to various other things that you somehow don't know these characters are? Well, if you don't, then you might want to watch a cartoon uh, or something or read a couple of uh, newspaper clips online. There's the Thanksgiving special on television. There's the Christmas special on television. There's various other specials that have been on television throughout the decades. There's been the cartoon. There, of course, there's, we're all started in the newspapers with the comic strips. They've been in commercials for various other products. So if you don't know who these characters are, then uh, you probably might want to do just a little bit of back uh, checking before you dive into this movie because this movie uh, dives right into the characters. You should know who these characters are, which is sort of refreshing. That there's no big super introduction of who's who, who's related to who, uh, why this, why that, why the adults are always wah, 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 you know. Uh, things like that. It pretty much dives right into the story, uh, and here's their world, and here's these characters. You know them, you love them. Let's get into the story. There's pretty much two questions when it comes to this movie. Does it uh, respect the lore and the characters and the history of the Peanuts brand, or does it just go its own way and completely tarnish it and completely ruin it uh, does it, or does it, uh, you know, respect everything? I'm proud to say, I'm happy to say, I'm relieved to say, it's wonderful. It pays homage. Uh, it, uh, it has a lot of callbacks from the kite eating tree to trying to kick the football. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. Totally respects everything that's come before. It would help if you know who these characters are, but if you don't, uh, it's, you're still going to like it because it's very funny. I was smiling from start to finish. Love this movie. I, it was totally uh, worth my time, worth my effort. Fantastic. I highly recommend it. Uh, I even think it didn't have toilet humor. Uh, before the movie, there was a trailer for uh, Alvin the Chipmunks, The Road Chimp, and the new Ratchet and Clank movie that's going to come out next year, and both of them had toilet humor. Uh, Theodore farted and then made a cheese ball move. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, they both vomited. Well, not, not, not Clank, but in that trailer, there was a vomit. But, uh, you know, almost all of these kid and youth targeted movies, there was at least one urine joke, one fart joke, one poop joke. But as far as I can tell, as far as I remember, there was none of that in the penis movie. Uh, if it wasn't there, it was so subtle, I didn't notice it. And if it was, you know, just leave in the comments that it happened. But I didn't notice it. So if it's in there, but super subtle. Congratulations to the filmmakers. If it's not there at all, then thank you filmmakers for having faith in your craft that you didn't need to have uh, stupid toilet humor. I mean, I like a good fart joke now and then, but it's practically in every youth targeted thing that, you know, oh, we can only get a laugh at least just one of that. No, you can have a very entertaining, thoughtful, fun, exciting time without having to resort to farts and poop and vomit. Okay, it can be done. The second question, does the CGI, because this is a fully CGI movie, does it hurt the movie? Does it help the movie? Or does it not affect anything at all? And in my opinion, it hurts it, but just a little bit. It doesn't ruin it. It doesn't, you know, it's not a, a bad ruin it. It's not like a, the Ninja Turtles movie where it takes the idea of these uh, turtles that are about, you know, like maybe like four and a half feet tall. All of a sudden, they're six feet tall, it's like 200 pounds. They're like miniature hulks that are like super duper muscular with giant shelves and giant weapons. Yet they somehow fit in regular man co manhole covers in, in New York. And somehow they do all this ninjutsu all around the city, but I've never been spotted, never been found. These like four uh, miniature hulks in New York that have never been seen. You know, it, it's, no, it's not like that kind of CGI. 
Uh, and actually, for the most part, even though it is CGI, they keep the 2D feel. There's some sequences where someone's dreaming and it's hand drawn, it's you know, hand drawn animation, but you know, it's all CGI. Uh, the panels all look as uh, pleasing in 2D as possible, which is where the hurt comes from. Because there's times, uh, for instance, the characters sometimes are shown with four fingers, sometimes they're shown with five fingers. Or like a character will have uh, their shoes off, and you'll see five toes. So it's like, okay, do these characters have four fingers or five fingers? You don't really notice that when you see it in the panels of the comic strip. You don't really notice it when you see it in the regular 2D animation. But in 3D, since you're already noticing things because of the new style, it becomes even stranger when the characters jump from four fingers to five fingers, four fingers to five fingers, back to fourth, and uh, it was just really weird like that. Or another scene where uh, Charlie Brown is talking to Lucy, they're, they're having one of their therapy sessions, and there's shots of Lucy, and she's off from the side or from behind her back, and like Lucy's hair shifts weirdly. Like this video here, the reason why it shakes because my tower shakes the table, so sometimes the video footage shakes and gets weird, everything like that. But in the movie, there were times where her hair was shifting, and I thought like there was something wrong with the projector, or with the, maybe the film didn't render properly, and then not edit it properly. But no, they're trying to keep that 2D style while with the 3D model, so you know her hair is 3D and shifting around like it would be in 3D, yet it's still trying to keep that 2D style, so it was like not shifting properly. So, you know, or when the characters walk, never really notice in 2D animation, but in this 3D animation, they got these big feet with small legs, so it's just really weird, and it takes a while to get used to seeing them walking around. Sort of like when you first watch the South Park characters walk around, where they sort of just hop here and there or shuffle forward here and there. You know, in this movie, it just takes a while to get used to seeing them walking around because their feet are so big and their legs are so small, and there's like, there's no, practically no knees, it's just sort of skipping around like that. So the CGI, in my opinion, hurts it, doesn't ruin it. You know, I'm quite sure this is just the first stop of many more films that are likely to come. I doubt this movie will bomb. I, I imagine this movie would be a big success. So it is likely, highly likely, that there will be more uh, movies, more cartoons done in the CGI style. But yeah, it's just a little off-putting that they're trying to do 3D animation that kept a 2D style, and it, there are just times when it just does not work. But, uh, you know, but that's a minor quip. That's why this is a, a A minus. Another reason why it's an A minus is that uh, the main story is Charlie Brown wants to impress the little redhead girl. Now, like I said, if you don't know the, the lore of uh, the Peanuts, uh, Charlie Brown has this major crush on his classmate that's only known as the little redhead girl. At no time is her actual name set in this movie. And I think unless it's like maybe like one special that someone can dig up, uh, the little redhead girl is never named. She's always just the little redhead girl, which is fine. Except there's a scene where Charlie Brown takes her name out of a bowl. They're picking partners for a, a, um, a book report. He takes the name out and he says, it's the little redhead girl. I'm like, isn't her name on that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you say her name? Because everyone else says the name. They pick up her name and say, ooh, I want Schroeder. Ooh, I want, uh, you know, Lucy. Ooh, I want Peppermint Patty. Ooh, I want, you know, whoever. And he goes, it's the little redhead girl. Like, no, I'm pretty sure her name is on there. And I'm pretty sure her parents should have named her Little Redhead Girl. <laughs> That's paying a little too much homage to the character. That scene should be done differently. Uh, so that he's not saying the little redhead. You could have just said, oh, I can't believe it is, and then like the bell rings, or uh, there's some distraction or some noise, and so he doesn't actually say the name, even though he knows the name there, and it's not the little red girl. The secondary story is Snoopy imagining himself as the World War I flying ace facing off against the Red Baron. Uh, now, the way they introduce the concept of the Red Baron in this movie is very clever. Uh, someone flies a plane of the Red Baron, uh, it gets out of control, starts flying around the neighborhood, and that inspires Snoopy to make this uh, fantasy story about him flying the Red Baron and trying to save this poodle named Fifi. Now, I don't know if the Fifi is a totally brand new character or not. Uh, I hope someone can tell me there in the, in the, in the, the comics. 
because uh, the reason why I'm not sure she's real because there are scenes where Snoopy is imagining himself as the as the, the World War One flying ace. So it goes around the neighborhood. He's trying to sneak behind enemy lines. So he feels like he's sneaking on a ditch, always climbing to that a cable. Yet every all the other characters are like, "What's Snoopy doing? Like, why is that crazy dog doing with him? Why is he ruining my table? Why is he in my house? Why is he climbing on my sh chandelier or whatever?" So, uh, but Fifi is never seen in the real world. Fifi is only shown in the imaginary world. And at the end, during that uh, in credit scene, Fifi is there. Uh, so it's like, okay, is Fifi a brand new character or is she a character that's already been around? This is the way they're using it in this story. I was a little confused. Uh, but one thing I didn't like about the whole Red Baron secret secondary story is that uh, there's a scene where Snoopy fights the Red Baron and he does his machine gun motion and there's no machine gun sound effect. There's no. And like, why is there no. That doesn't make any sense. If you don't know the lore, you don't know why he's going. Okay, it's already weird that this dog is flying his doghouse and pretending to be a plane where everyone else in his fantasy has a plane. Fifi has a plane. Red Baron has a plane. Uh, Woodstock is his mechanic, and his uh, and he leaves a team of mechanics, and other mechanics have planes. So, uh, but Snoopy stays in his uh his, his uh doghouse, and all of a sudden he goes and like and like without the sound effects, I know what it is. And almost everyone else knows who it is, but why there's no sound effects? That doesn't make any sense. So I just try to maintain some of rating. Did they not find the right sound effect? Did they somehow forget? <laughs> uh, they got everything else right and they just overlooked it or forgot it or made a mistake? Could be, but it's just weird that instead of there's only two moments, so why is it in there? Now, there are at least two uh, post-credit scenes or mid-credit scenes or whatever the term is. Uh, you know, the credit starts rolling, and then there's a little bit of a, a, a story, and then the credits roll again, and there's another little story that involves uh, Snoopy and his uh, family and friends and things like that. Uh, I don't know if there's one after that, I, uh, at least at the very end, if there is, it's probably at the very end. The reason why I don't know is because I left in order to go see the new James Bond movie. There was uh, by the time that second scene ended, the main chorus roll, once the main chorus roll, I knew how to run over to the other theater to, to see the beginning of uh, Spectre, and I made it just in time. But yeah, I don't know if there's a, a third uh, credit scene afterwards. If someone does know, uh, just write in the comments uh, so I can find out. And But uh, yeah, there are at least two, so be sure to, uh, when this credit starts rolling, don't just run out the theater, stay for those uh, uh, two extra bits of uh, story which are very cute and wonderful and fun. I like this movie a lot. I almost love this movie. And one of those weird things, I would be loving this movie. And like I said, no no major party humor. Pays uh, respects to the characters and the lore. Uh, if you love him before, you will love him this way. And uh, except for those little interruptions with the uh, animation and the weirdness of having 2D into 3D that sometimes to still maintain 2D, it's kind of weird. But other than that, I like this movie very much. I was smiling practically the whole time. Pretty much the only time I wasn't smiling was when I was hearing, and I go, huh? Or, this is a little red-headed girl. And I go, huh? You know, other than that, I'm like, <sighs> now, I was pretty much smiling and smiling and smiling and smiling. That's why this is the A minus. That's my review for the 2015 CGI animated Peanuts movie or the Charlie Brown film, if you will. Uh, I give it an A minus. I highly recommend it. It is wonderful. And once again, I'm High Hill Knight. Please subscribe to my channel. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.